My next guest is an entertainment industry legend. His career spans a half century and includes comedy, drama, and scores of performances in film and television. But I think more importantly was his pioneering work as a major supplier of network programming through the 70s and the 80s. And now he graces us with his presence at the round table. Scully Mitchell. How are you? I'm just fine, my buddy. How you doing? I'm okay. Good, I'm good. I'm okay. Keeping body and soul together. And you look fantastic for 110. Say it again. <laughs> <laughs> now you look great, and it's Thank nice you. to see you. And Thank this you. is actually uh, uh, the first uh, uh, show in this particular uh, uh, facility. Mm -hmm. And hopefully you'll come back and visit us uh, time and time again. All you got to do is ask. Okay. I want to talk about uh, the industry for a minute. Mm. I talked about you creating all kinds of stuff back in the 70s and the 80s. Um, you were hooked up with Brandon Tartikoff. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know, when I saw that, I thought, Scully Mitchell and Brandon Tartikoff. Mm -hmm. uh, back then, the image, our image, on screen, the little screen and the big screen, suffered. Mm. And we needed people like you to kind of give it, you know, some realism. What do you, what's your take on where we are today as it relates to image? Well, I, I think they're doing everything that we, in quotes, fought against, you know, image-wise. But I don't fight against uh, a certain kind of image. I fight against the imbalance. There's no balance, right. to, you know. Um, you could give me the Jeffersons, mm -hmm. which was a good show. Yeah. Certain image. I didn't mind the Jeffersons as long as we had the Cosby show. A balance. A balance there, you know. And uh, right now, it doesn't seem like we're, we're at an imbalance again, you know. And um, everything is very Negroid. Yeah. And the problem I have, and had then, back then, was just what you said. If there was a Jefferson's, and there had to be a Cosby show. Mm -hmm. uh, if you turn on a, another channel, and you see a white sitcom that you liked or didn't mm -hmm. like, there was always those other channels you could turn on and get dramas. Mm -hmm. and, uh, mm -hmm. We don't have that. No. And that's, that, that's at, in the 21st century, is very, very, very disturbing. And then there's an attitude amongst the um, the networks and so forth. Now, excuse me. There just doesn't seem to be any caring. First of all, we must realize that when we talk about television, it is not an entertainment medium. Mm -hmm. It's a sales medium. That's mm -hmm. that's what it's there for to right. sell. Mm -hmm. So when we criticize it for the programming and so forth, it's not there for the programming. It's there for the products. Right. But they just don't seem to care anymore about what the programming is at all. Mm. There doesn't seem to be any guidelines anymore. I'm offended by a lot of the, the verbiage. Mm. You know, yeah. Uh, everything is sexual. Right. Everything. I don't know why we celebrate war so much. I don't know why we celebrate killing and mayhem. And I just don't know why we do. And there's so and much of it. There's so much of it. It's just all over us. Yeah. You know? So uh, I found I find myself longing for like. Uh, a, a good little foreign language film. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I do, mm -hmm, I really do. Mm -hmm. uh, and so the image has suffered. It was suffered. It suffered back then. It's suffering now, maybe even more. Mm -hmm. So, because of this whole current kind of, uh, like you say, you know, the verbiage, uh, the images, uh, the young kids. Now the whole thing is geared toward youngsters and that demographic. Now, one thing I like about it, I am seeing more blacks participating in the process mm -hmm. now. Not in the process, in the product. In the product. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> different. Yes, not in the process. Uh, there, there's a lot, lot more blacks. Uh, uh, they're all over, and I hate to say it that way, but, but they're in many of the commercials, mm -hmm. many of the programs. I don't think there's hardly a 
program that doesn't have a minority of some sort in it, or two, or three. It used to be that obligatory one, right? You know. <laughs> well, that's because cable came along, yeah. the programming content, yeah. And they had to have, mm -hmm. they have to have it. So yeah. now you, you know, you got to. I just think the wrong people are producing this stuff, but. Even our book, you know, oh, yes. just, you know. Uh, uh, incidentally, speaking of that, there, you, you know, you look at people like Oprah Winfrey, who's mm -hmm. like, uh, yeah, she's got her own network now mm -hmm. for crying out loud, which I, I think is great. It's yeah. wonderful, you know. Uh, you got Tyler Perry, who's got his studios in Atlanta, mm -hmm. and he's doing all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. And I happen to see uh, For Colored Girls, the mm -hmm. film For Colored Girls, his mm -hmm. film, which I thought was really quite good, yeah. and I thought was his best work. And I was so surprised that it didn't get any consideration for the Academy. Now, I watch movies at the Academy, and uh, when we went to see uh, uh, Color Girls, there were 25 people in the theater. Mm -hmm. And this is a 2,500 20, seat theater, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I, I just, you know, I just thought I'd throw that out there. Even when we do stuff, we don't get the kind of attention that. Um, Oprah did a movie some years ago. I'm trying to think of the name of it. And it was a lovely movie. And she planned a big opening and so forth and so on. And she said the night of the opening, nobody showed up. Is this with Beloved with Danny, with Danny Glover? Yeah, right. Yeah. Right, right. I, I think it was one of those. It was beloved. I, yeah. I remember that tag. And nobody I mean, showed. she was crushed. Yeah. I mean, she was it's amazing. And we have got to start. We have got to start patronizing and and supporting our efforts. Um, when we do something, what happened was integration has, in any form, is not the best thing to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, assimilation is very good, but mm -hmm. integration in itself, because uh, a lot of black businesses, successful black entrepreneurs and mm -hmm. so forth, lost a lot when the movement happened back in the 60s and mm -hmm. so forth, and rightfully so. Right. Uh, I, I remember we did a movie down in Grambling called Grambling's White Tiger, and Eddie Robinson, uh, one of the lines he said to me, he said, boy, you don't know how we wanted to get Herschel Walker. Mm. He said, well, we just couldn't compete with the big white schools. Right. You know? And, uh, and the, the black colleges started losing revenue from their sports programs and everything mm -hmm. and so forth. So we got to learn to support what are black entrepreneurs? It doesn't have to be good or bad for me. No, I understand what you're saying. It's got to be getting done. Right. And anything I can do to help them or myself mm -hmm. uh, get something done, uh, get in the game, you know, be part of the process, right. that's what means something to me. So now, you, 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 you've retired from the industry. Yes. You're, uh, what are you doing with yourself? Nothing. I mean, <laughs> nothing. Nothing. Well, I know you have a lot of cars. Yes. So, yeah. And you've always been into cars. Yes. Yeah. yeah. At one point, you had 50-some-odd cars. 52 at one time. What the heck do you do with 52 you cars? Don't. You don't. <laughs> you try to sell them when your wife don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you do with them. So you have a, like a, a warehouse? Warehouse, yeah. And uh, the, these are my keepers. These are the ones that are not for sale. Mm. And I go out and I play with them. And you can't do it but so much. You know, after a while, you, if you do it every day, it's like a job then. Sure. You know, it's not yeah. like a, <laughs> a hobby. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and other than that, um, I read a lot. Uh, I work on some scripts every now and then, and for no other reason. I would like to get back into the business. You would? Oh, yes, yes. Because you were tremendous when you were in it, yeah, I, I, creatively. Yes, I, I'd like to get back into the business. But I, I just have the feeling it's passed me by, mm. you know. Um, I sit up and I watch some shows, and the very things 
in that show, show that I would say, mm, I got to fix that. Mm -hmm. That's what's making the show a hit. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> the bent toward integration is really not helping. Well, it's, it shouldn't be integration. It should be assimilation. assimilation. It was never about integration. Mm -hmm. It was all, always about access to opportunity. It wasn't about we wanted to live in your neighborhood. Mm -hmm. we, we wanted a chance to make our own your neighborhood. Right. You know? And uh, as usually, things get perverted and distorted and so forth. But uh, and that, that's not saying that integration wasn't worthwhile. Mm -hmm. But it has done a lot of, it has done almost as much damage one way as it did help the other way. Mm. I want to ask you a question about a, a, a play that, it, that, that opened uh, recently. It's called Clybourne Park. And Clybourne Park was the was the area in Raisin in the Sun mm, when mm. where they moved the black family. Right, moved. right. Now the play uh -huh. is a complete reversal. Reversal. Of that. <laughs> What's your take on something like that? Have you heard about that? No. It's no. The, it's yeah. It takes place uh, in Clybourne Park, which is the name of the play, and it's about this family. I I, I haven't seen the play, mm -hmm. but the talk is it's a reversal of Raisin in the Sun, uh, and. Uh, what is it, white, about the white flight? It, it, but, but Clybourne Park, where they moved to, uh -huh. went all black. Yes. So now they're coming back yes. to Clybourne Park. But the same thing in Harlem. Right. Yeah. Same thing. Same yeah. thing. It's an interesting, I just thought maybe yeah. you had heard about the takeoff on a raisin in the sun or the reversal of a raisin in the sun. But um, Nobody seems to be too creative now. That, that is, that's, that's nice. Mm -hmm. That's nice. Mm -hmm. um, but I wish they'd have let us have that story to ourselves. Right, I know, I know. That's what I thought when I saw it. The same thing happened with a play that I produced a long time ago called Day of Absence. Uh-huh, uh -huh. uh, well, the, the, the double bill was yeah. Happy Ending and Day of Absence. Yeah. But Day of Absence was, of course, about the town that wakes up and the blacks are all gone and yes. the town goes absolutely yeah. crazy. Uh -huh. Brilliant satire. Yeah. Uh -huh. Turns out a few years ago, not long ago, maybe seven, eight years ago, uh, the, a Mexican writer, wrote this play called A Day Without Mexicans or something like that. And it was, mm -hmm. this, it was, a, race, it was a, a day of absence, yeah. the same mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they, what is it, they yeah. took our blues and all the links and said it. So you still want to produce stuff. Are you writing movies or what? No, when you I'm, write? I'm, no I'm piddling. I'm, I'm piddling. Um, I, I, I made an uh, entree. I, that I was vain enough or to think that they'd say, ooh, mm -hmm. Scully wants to come back. Wants to come back. You know? Well, one thing, most of the people in the business today don't even know who I am. Not that I was that much before, but I at least knew the people in the business. And most of the people in the business now uh, that make decisions, uh, they, don't, they don't know who who I am, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. and nor should they. And uh, so that, and this being a business of uh, relationships, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, it makes it very, very hard, you know. Whatever happened to, I remember you did Barefoot in the Park, against with Tracy Reed. Yeah. What, mm. Whatever happened to Tracy Reed? Is she still acting or what? Uh, I saw, I, I used Tracy in one of the shows that we did and uh, I ran into her two or three times when the Raiders were here, because we both had season seats. Mm -hmm. And other than that, I, I she was a good and is was a yeah. gorgeous, gorgeous oh, Halle Berry of, the, of that time. That camera loved her. Oh, jeez, yeah. what a beautiful mm -hmm. woman! I did a movie. I can't even remember what it was, mm -hmm. but I did something with mm -hmm. her. Mm -hmm. I remember we were up against the wall kissing, and mm -hmm. I'll never forget that. But yes. I can't remember the yeah. movie. Yeah. But I can remember that. Mm -hmm. No, but you, you, uh, you know, you were. You say people didn't know know who you are, and I can understand that because they don't know who I am either, and mm -hmm. that's fine, mm -hmm. you know. But it's what you do, and it's what you did. Yeah. Talk about the, the relationship with Brandon Tartikoff for a minute. I had a fella uh, say to me one day, he said, you love Brandon, huh? I said, oh, yeah. <laughs> so he said, oh, yeah. I said, 
Oh, yeah. I said, he did something for me that nobody else in this business ever did for me, you know? I said, uh, this is a cute story, I, I think. Mm. His name came up in the conversation once. And I used to always refer back to him because he was a mentor mm -hmm. to me. Sure. As far as, not as far as making a show, as far as traveling through the business, you know. And a fella said to me one day, he says, well, you got pictures of Brandon with chickens? Mm. <laughs> and I said, I ought to knock you in your mouth for calling me stupid. Yeah. And he said, I didn't call you stupid. I said, yes, you did. I said, do you think I'm so stupid that if I had pictures of Brandon with chickens, <laughs> I'd only have one show on air? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. But he was. He was your mentor. Yes, sir. Kind of had you on his wing, and you yeah. learned the business basically yeah. through him. He was a good man. Yeah. yeah he was no. a good man. And um, left too soon. I think so. Yeah. Left too soon. Yeah, I think so. And uh, it, it was rocky in the beginning between him and I. What do you mean? Uh, well, before I ever got a deal with Brandon, he and I had many conversations about the same kind of conversations you and I would have, mm -hmm. you know, and why isn't there, and how oh, come it's not. I see. All those kind of conversations. And I would continue, continuously point things out to him. I said, see, that's what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. And he finally came around to saying, hmm, hmm. I said, yeah. Okay. Uh, well, what's that project you wanted to do? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He understood. Yeah. But you had to break it down. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it was, it wasn't an overnight thing or anything. It was a constant thing. Mm -hmm. But I had the, I had the opportunity of having access sure. to him. Very important word. Yeah. It's very See, important. We don't have access to any of the decision makers. We don't have any input mm -hmm. as to what decisions are made. Now, when you say it that way, it's not like we want to run the business. Right. We just like to, it's the same old story. Mm. You know, and my wife has the greatest reaction to these kind of conversations. Oh, you're all talking about that again? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Access is important. Yeah. Access, and I could just to go back to my career in the mm -hmm. beginning, when I was started producing early on, I, did, I had done three David Merrick shows on Broadway. Mm -hmm. Short-lived, but three mm -hmm. anyway. And he would invite me to his office, he and, and, and uh, Jack Schlissel. Mm -hmm. was his company manager, his general manager. They would, he would invite me up to his office. Every time they would have production meetings, David would invite me. And Jack Schlissel said to me once, he came to backstage in my dressing room, he said, you know, I don't know what it is, but David Merrick really likes you. Mm -hmm. He would never, I don't care what color the person is, would never invite anybody into a production mm -hmm. meeting. And that's how I learned the business of producing mm -hmm. plays mm -hmm. from David Merrick and Jack Schlissel mm -hmm. and a few other people too. But that's how it started, access. You're absolutely right. The, what was it, New York Black Ensemble? The NEC, the Negro Ensemble. Negro. 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 I love that word. Yeah. I do. Yeah. Well, that's why we used it. Yeah. We got, we caught hell for it. We keep talking about black. Oh, we caught hell for it. I like Negro. Yeah. It's lyrical. Negro. We did it in honor of the people that came before mm -hmm. us. That's why we used it. Now, I didn't know any of you mm -hmm. from that group. I, I was a nightclub comic. You know, you guys were in the arts. <laughs> 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 but some great talent came from oh, there, didn't they? Please. Amazing. And I mean, a lot of it yes. went on to do yeah. great things. Mm -hmm. Some mm -hmm. of them were even making $20 million a yeah. picture. Yes, yes. But yeah, yeah. the NEC, the yeah. NEC uh, was, uh, laid a lot of foundation mm -hmm. for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And you know, I kind of, uh, I'm writing my autobiography at this point. Mm -hmm. I don't know when I'm going to finish it, but I'm not rushing. 
but I'm going back and reflecting back on that, that, that time. Those were glorious oh, days. Wonderful days. I, know. I was going to ask you, what decade? I think I know the answer. For me, I know the answer. What was the most important decade for you, artistically? Personally, Personally and artistically. Jeez. I'd say the 60s. And you'd be right, because yeah. I'd say the 60s, yeah. too. I'd say the uh, 60s. They don't do that anymore. No. But you're right. I was going to say the 50s, because that's when I started learning how to be a performer. Now, I wasn't good, hmm. but I learned how to be good. And I was going to say that was probably the most important decade. But from a business standpoint, and I, uh, I would have to say the 60s. Yeah, things began to happen. Things yeah. began to happen. And, you, you know, people say, what was your big break? And I say, you don't look at it as a big break. It's something that you've been working after, and it finally happened for right. you, regardless of who facilitated it. But that's what you were working for. Sure. And it's a, a natural progression as you move along. Now, in retrospect, I can look back and say that the first television show I ever did, the very first television show I ever did was the Ed Sullivan Show. Mm. So I started at the top, you know. Uh, and I ended up doing 21 Sullivan shows over a span of time. But he didn't give me that as a break. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he saw me somewhere. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But no, I remember those days too, uh -huh. and those performances. Yeah, yes, yes. yeah. He saw me somewhere and said, hmm. Mm -hmm. We could use that on the show, you know. Right. And um, so it wasn't a break. And uh, but the '60s was an interesting time. I think that's the. I always refer to it as the period when we almost made it. And and I agree with that yeah. 100. percent We almost, almost made, made it. The it. door was almost yeah. open. Yeah. It was cracked. Yeah, it was bipartisan. Yes. Everybody was right. trying to get in. Yeah. Yeah before we could get it closed and locked. Mm. Was your brother, uh, was Billy uh, performing at that time too? No, Billy was in college. Oh, okay. Yeah. So he wasn't performing yeah. at that point. And uh, Billy was freedom rider and all that. He's uh, talking about an activist. Oh, no, I remember. I remember yeah. meeting him too. I mean, yeah. I, you know, uh, the, yeah, I just wondered if you guys were, were poor me. He was a hell of a piano player. Yes. I remember. Uh, I was wondering if you guys were performing at the same, no. in the same, you were before him. Yeah. Yeah. Sort, sort of. Uh, um, I'm his big brother. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, Mr. B. Scully, Mitchell's little brother. Little brother. I'm Billy Mitchell's big brother. Oh, yeah. man. I, I used to, to, speaking of that, I used to go, uh, my, I used to go to the, through the airports and my son would go through the airports with me. He says, oh yeah, Robert Hooks is your dad, right? Yeah. <laughs> now I get, you're Kevin Hooks' dad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're Kevin Hooks' yeah. dad. And yeah. it's great. It's yeah. wonderful. I love it. And uh, needless to say, I'm proud of his accomplishments yeah. and, and, and all. But, uh, you know, look, we, we were very, very uh, instrumental. And helping a lot of people. Yes, we did. Uh, I, I was fortunate in, 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 in being able to just start a couple of three theater companies, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and through that, Lee giving opportunities mm -hmm. that were not there mm -hmm. for these young black mm -hmm. artists. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, of course, that just took off and took off, and we ended up with the NEC and, mm -hmm. and companies across the country mm -hmm. uh, imitating that in mm -hmm. a good way. In a so good there was way. a place in Cleveland. Well, there are several of them. Well, St. Louis is the one. St. Louis Rep is, is the one that uh, is still going. Uh -huh. The place in Cleveland you're talking about is the Caramu. Caramu, yeah. I had uh, quite a few friends that came out of that. I think uh, Guillaume and them came out of that. Yeah, exactly. And no, Johnny Caramu. Greenwood and uh, a bunch of them. Well, we but planned. I, I knew the NEC was... Oh, yeah. Very, very instrumental. Meaning. Yeah, very meaningful. Very instrumental. Uh, 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 what, what we would like to do here in Inglewood, uh, and you know Milton R. F. Brown, mm -hmm. uh, who was like the the brains behind mm -hmm. the whole thing. Uh, uh, a little crazy, but the brains behind the whole thing. Uh, we want to do something like that mm -hmm. here in Inglewood. Mm -hmm. We want to start a performing arts, uh, performing arts company theater. 
and uh, it's going to start here mm -hmm. in this particular auditorium once it's renovated and all. We would like to call on you. Mm -hmm. We would like to call on you to kind of, you know, assist in whatever way, as long as we know we can call on you. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's what we'd like to do because you are so important. Hey, give me a call. Okay, <laughs> give me a call. We'll have lunch. <laughs> and we did. We had, last time I saw you, we had lunch. That fellow said, "Give me a call." He says, "What's your number?" He says, "Yeah, yeah." <laughs> <laughs> Scary Mitchell, mm -hmm. my dear friend, thank you so I much for coming this. to the round table. It's good to see you, buddy. It's good to see you, yeah. too. Good to you see you. the same place? Yes, yes. I'm going to drop by. Yes. And we'll, we'll, mm -hmm. we'll go over the yeah. rows and, yeah. and, yeah, do mm -hmm. our thing. Thanks, Scully. Thank you. Take care. Stay. Stay, please. Stay. Stay. Down, boy. Down, boy. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back.